Chapter 40, Lost Candelies Again Darling hurried about with all the time fairies who'd stayed behind to help. They served more and more food until everyone was satisfied. Cheers to Darling and her crew, shouted Blizzard. Big cheers to Darling and her crew, added Angel. Everyone cheered. May I continue reading, asked Angel. I'm loving this. Great work, Toll and Jax. Toll and Jack stood up and bowed. The audience cheered them and then started shouting, More! Angel smiled. Here goes, she said. Chapter 40, Lost Candelies, again. When Jax and Toll arrived back in Lost Candelies with Dodger's dad, a soft sherbet snow was falling. They took shelter in the candy house while Toll attempted again to telepath solo. It's no use, he said. Clearly telepathy does not work from here. Just need to change that. He should be okay, said Jax, and hopefully Halo will come back. We'd better find out some things from Jute, Jute suggested Toll. They began to question Jute in whispers, just in case there were any spies. Jax made him yet another megaphone by using a slither of licorice. How did you get here? asked Toll. After Isla's men took me away from Dodger and Dorrit, I was told that I was being taken to work in a virtual world. At first I thought they were all nuts, but gradually I realised they were deadly serious. When I first came into the book, I thought I'd lost my mind. I don't know how long I've been here, but it feels like months. There are two days here for every day back home, said Toll. But when we first met Dodger last week, he said you'd been gone for about three weeks. So if you add this last week and then double it, that makes two months. Maybe it's being small or something, but it seems like way more than that. Jute sat down on Jax's wrist. The weight of the licorice megaphone was too much for him. He propped it up on one of the other beads on the bracelet and then spoke through and then spoke through it again. After a while, I realised that I was inside a book, although I still had my doubts sometimes. It wasn't until you guys arrived that I realised, that I finally realised it was all true. How did they shrink you? asked Jax. First they took me to Magran, a land full of ridiculous nicks and equins, Jute began before Toll interrupted him. We know the place. I know the place, he said. My mother t has told us that story since we were little. Well, I don't know about your mother's story, said Jute. I was there for real, with all these tiny people who wanted to be royalty. As far as I could make out, they were all crazy, but I had to work for them day and night. And there were such mean little things, always beating me or biting my hand or throwing things at me. After the first week, I got so cross that one day I hit back but it was a bad move. After that, I was locked up in a dungeon for days and days. And when I got out, I sort of lost my nerve to do anything. Why didn't you just leave Magran? asked Jax. And go where? asked Jute. All my confidence had gone, and I think that's when I first started to shrink. I missed my children very much. It was so sad and so lonely there. Each day I just got a bit smaller. As if I was... Sorry, each day I just got a bit smaller, as if I was wasting away to nothing. And the smaller I became, the less use I was to the Nicks and Equins, or the Kings and Queens, as they insisted upon being called. I seriously doubt if any of them were really Queens and Kings. Finally, my heart just broke, and I reduced down and down to the size of about a two-year-old. When they realised how small I was and how useless I was, becoming and how useless I was as a servant. Some of the Nicks and Equins insisted that I have molecular reduction. They said that I didn't work hard enough. I wasn't worried because I didn't know what molecular reduction meant and I didn't think that it could be any worse than what had already happened. When I asked some of the kings and queens what, it, what, what molecular reduction was, none of them knew either. So a few of them called in a word expert. 
and that was when this wacko called Humpty Dumpty turned up. Humpty Dumpty, Jax repeated incredulously. Isn't he the one who fell off a wall in a nursery rhyme? Yes, and he was also in the Alice books by Lewis Carroll. He's one of my mum's favourite characters, said Toll, who was intrigued to discover that Jute had been trapped inside one of his mother's stories. Well, well, he'd been trapped inside one of his mother's child, uh, one of his mother's stories. Oh, that'll do. Well, I'd never heard of him, said Jute, probably some flaw in my childhood, but to me he was just this enormous egg with arms and legs and a plaid suit. Actually, after everything I'd been through, I found him quite terrifying because I was so small by then he seemed like a monster. He kept saying in a very loud voice that he could decide the meaning of any word. And on that day, he decided that having molecular reductions meant being me-juiced. And then he said that it meant being made very small before being turned into a piece of jewellery. Jax looked horrified. Jute continued, when all the Nicks and Equins laughed and told him that I was still far too big to become a piece of jewellery for them, Humpty Dumpty announced that being me-juiced meant being reduced to the size of a piece of popcorn before being used to make jewellery. And so before I knew what was going on, one of the equins pointed a magic wand at me. As she did, I shriveled down to become a piece of purple popcorn and I was threaded onto a popcorn bracelet. How cruel, said Jax with a sigh. What about Petrel's parents, asked Toll. Did you ever meet them? Petrel who, asked Jute. Shearwater, said Toll. Petrel Shearwater. Oh, she must be Storm and Palace Shearwater's daughter, said Jute. They were legendary around Magran. They'd been in some other land called Mathema. I think it's inside this book somewhere. But when they refused to cooperate, they were said to ma sent to Magran. They were wild. I was far too small for them to notice me, but one of the queens was wearing me as a bracelet when Storm and Palace began working for her. After Storm and Palace almost blew up her castle, Queen Holt Coldheart insisted that they be reduced. Toll frowned. Such horrible little kings and queens. Awful, said Jute into his little megaphone. I never saw them again. So you don't have any idea about what became of Palace you don't have any idea about what became of Palace and Storm, asked Jax. No. All I know, sorry, I just need to change that to no. All I know is that unmeducing happens in one of the cities in this place, but I've never been able to quite remember the name of the unmeducing city. Sometimes I can feel it on the tip of my tongue, but try as I might, I can't remember its name. <clears throat> We must find out, said Toll. How else will we get you off this ridiculous bracelet, bracelet and back to your normal size? Suddenly Toll sat bolt upright. I remember what the city was called, he said. Remember? I had that dream on my first night in Lost Candles. That awful little creature was telling me that I'd never remember the name of the city. That, sorry, an awful little creature... An awful little creature was telling me that I'd never remember the name of the city and that lots of people would die because of me not being able to remember. Well, I remember the city's name now. It's a city in my mum's book. It's called Imen City. Imen City or Immensity. And Queen Coldheart said that people either got really big or really small there. We've got to find it. Jute, how do we get to the different cities here? Do you know where Imen City is or Magran? Jute looked confused. I thought we were in Magran. I didn't go anywhere except Magran. Aren't we in Magran? He asked. No, this is Los Candles. We found you here in Los Candles, on this mantelpiece, in this very house. 
Jax said. You must remember how you got left on the mantelpiece, don't you? Not really, said Jute. Queen Coldheart just put the bracelet up on the, her mantelpiece and then the next thing I knew you were putting me onto your arm. I thought I was still in Magran. Toll looked at the mirror above the mantelpiece. I wonder, he said to himself, waving his hand in front of the mirror. Look, said Jax, the mirror's becoming all silver and steamy, just like in Mum's book, said Toll. I bet you just fell into this room, jute, right through the mirror, and I wouldn't be surprised if Queen Hot Cold Heart's castle isn't directly behind this mirror. Oh, don't take me back there, begged Jute. She smells so awful and I hate being strapped to her wrist all day. Hard labour would have been better. He's right, said Toll. We shouldn't take him anywhere near Queen Coldheart. Can you stay here and make sure Jute is safe while I go and try to find out where Iman City is? No worries, said Jax, glad not to have to accompany Toll. Toll, however was not in the least bit afraid of what he'd find in Magran. He knew exactly how to deal with the puffed-up little Nicks and Equins there. It was all in his mother's story.